Some months ago, I did a rant, if you like, on health and safety gone mad. And is this health and safety gone mad? Question mark there. I want to have another health and safety rant. And this time, I want to be in praise of health and safety. Now, is it possible to hold two diametrically opposed views at the same time? Of course it is. I do it all the time. I could argue one case one day and another case another day, just because I like an argument. But anyway, what I'm talking about here is health and safety and the culture of health and safety and I didn't want to give the impression that I was knocking health and safety per se. The video that I did previously was talking about a guy who was working in a loft and he fell through the plasterboard in the loft and unfortunately injured himself. And all I was saying is the company was fine for not having put safety measures in there, full bags, full arrest, crawling boards. I don't know what they would have put in. But the point I was making is there comes a point where you've got to rely on a person's skill and judgment. They've got to use this, their noggin, rather than just relying on the nanny state to keep them safe, wrap them in cotton wool and stop them from doing their job. But having said that, there is a place for health and safety, a good place for health and safety, because if you've ever been on a site where somebody's been badly injured or they've been killed, you'll know that it's not a very nice experience. You think about that person's family, you think about that person who has either lost their life or lost their livelihood, and it's no fun, believe me. So if we can get through our working career without giving up our life for the sake of it, there isn't a job that's worth that, is there? Just to give you a little bit of perspective in what I'm talking about, out here. The legislation in health and safety, the whole culture of health and safety has gone forward in judders, if you like. Those judders are really due an awful lot to bad experience. We seem to have to let accidents happen and then learn our lesson from accidents. And usually there's a smoking gun. Usually when you look at it, there's something that suggested that might have happened and people afterwards are saying sometimes it's even a whistleblower as we call them now or somebody who's warning against the impending doom and often their warnings go on deaf ears so what we've tried to do over the years, we've tried to learn from these experiences. The name Heather Green is embedded in my brain and a lot of people of my age because there was a horrendous railway crash just outside that station in the late 60s. A load of young people going up to see the fireworks celebrations in London. The train derailed and many of them were killed and many more of them were injured. It turned out to be the failure of the bolts that keep the track on the sleeper. Those big bolts that you see the guys winding around with their big spanners had fractured and the rail was loose. What that led to was that they went and replaced those bolts on all those sleepers where they had bolts which were not high tensile steel and they replaced them with high tensile steel bolts and solved that problem but of course a lot of people had to die in order for that to happen now if we fast forward quite a lot from there there was another incident when the herald of free enterprise was sailing out of zeebrugge harbor the bow doors were left open and as the ship sailed out the bow doors which take all all the traffic, all the, the cars and the lorries and everything, the sea washed in through those bow doors and sank the ship or turned it, capsized it at least. And a lot of people were killed, unfortunately, and a lot more injured in that incident. And it was an absolutely horrendous thing that Saturday morning when we woke up to the news that a cross-channel ferry had sunk in that way. Everybody would have said, that was impossible. How can that happen? And it happened simply because some poor unfortunate soul who was responsible for closing those bow doors prior to the ship sailing had fallen asleep on his bunk and he hadn't done the job and of course the ship sailed. Now you could blame that guy, you could say lazy guy, he should have been out on the job or whatever. What we should have had was a system in place, which we now have happily, whereby it's impossible for that ship to start to sail unless the bow doors are closed. A very simple bit of electronics. They can have a warning system, they can have a couple of cameras down there, they can have all kinds of monitoring things. Check the bow doors are closed. Check the first officer says, bow doors closer, bow doors close, set sail. It's easy, we do it all the time now, checks and balances. When commercial pilots fly aircraft, there's two of them, and they shout the checks to each other and they check everything off, so we're doubling up. We're not relying on one human being. That's another big lesson we've learned, is you need a bit of backup. You need somebody watching your back. We learn from such a disaster and we move forward, and nobody could argue with that. And then we get something like the King's Cross fire, where a lighted cigarette drops down through the wooden escalators and there's a lot of dust 
There's a lot of litter down there, all kinds of debris down there. And that fire very soon catches hold or that whole escalator catches fire very, very quickly. Traps all those people in the underground station, full of smoke, full of flames. Again, unfortunately, we had 31 people die in that incident and hundreds more injured. What do we do? No smoking in the underground stations. Seems obvious, but it took the King's Cross fire to make that happen. Another railway disaster, the Clapham Railway crash, where one train ran into the back of the other because the signal was green. It should have been red. And the only reason the signal was green is because an electrician who had been wiring the signals up didn't do a great job, left a loose wire, or left a stray wire, which arced across and made the signal go green when it should have been red. Poor guy had been working, he hadn't had a day off for weeks on end and he was doing this job and there was nobody there doing the checks and balances. In other words, we need, what we would probably do now is he'd have to take a photograph of his work, that photograph would be stored somewhere, somebody would have a look at it, somebody would come around and inspect his work, check the terminals were tight and so on. These things happen, human error is all over the place. I should know that, I make enough mistakes and I expect you do too. And in a similar Mulevane, you look at the Bradford City football stadium fire where those wooden stands went up like an inferno. Again, cigarette litter underneath, somebody chucks a fag down and up it goes. Should we be building football stands from timber? Definitely not. So all these things, all these disasters, and remember we haven't even reached Grenfell at that stage, lead to a health and safety culture. When we come to build the London Olympics in 2012, we find that there hasn't been one single fatality on that whole job because of that health and safety culture. And then we look at something like Crossrail where there were a few deaths, but not actually on the job, many of them. Again, huge task, a huge project that they carried out under very, very difficult circumstances people weren't killed. You see back in the day, if you look at things like the building of the fourth bridge and that where you just had loads and loads of people and we had coal miners dying in the thousands. So all those things were improved by the health and safety culture. That comes at a price. You cannot work as quickly and as efficiently when you're wearing all that PPE, you're wearing the gloves, the helmet, the goggles, the ear defenders, you're walking around like a spaceman. And obviously the productivity is reduced. I mean, even putting that clobber on in the morning takes half an hour and then another half hour to take it off at the end of the day. And it's not easy to work in. Everybody slows down and if it's hot, it's very, very uncomfortable. When they talk about the British productivity, they they really need to factor in the health and safety because we have one of the best health and safety records in Europe, if not the best, certainly better than a lot of countries and even better than Germany. That comes at a price. Our productivity drops because we're trying to save people's lives. And it's a fact of life that there is a trade-off between getting the job done and staying safe. For all us builders who are working on building sites where we're not constantly supervised, we have to do the risk assessment, we have to use our judgment, and we have to say, is it worth us putting up a scaffolding to do that job, or shall we nip up a ladder and do the job and risk falling off? And of course, the other thing you could say is that although there have been fewer accidents among builders and roofers and all the rest of it, because we don't go up ladders so much, there has been an increase in accidents among scaffolders. So really we're passing the problem down the line slightly in that respect. But I think overall, you would say that there's been a great improvement in health and safety on sites. And I don't want to give the impression to anybody that I'm against that, because I'm not. I think it's a good thing and I think it should continue. But I would just say all those people who say we're lazy and that we can't turn out as much work as anybody else. They need to look at the way that other countries are actually conducting themselves and doing that work. I've traveled around Europe and I can tell you that in some European countries, even though we've got European standards or we had European standards, we're still complying with many of those, we actually exceeded those standards. We went over and above those standards to keep our workers safe. So you see that if you're going to have this health and safety regime, if you're going to have this health and safety culture, there is always going to be a trade-off between 
between the two things. Now, my argument is that at some point, people have to be able to use their judgment and their good sense to say, I'm working on a roof, I'm putting on ridge tiles, I don't need to be wearing a hard hat to do that. And in some cases, as one of our viewers pointed out the other week, there are occasions where you lean over to look at something, your hard hat falls off and hits the bloke below you. And that's happened to me. So during my long and checkered career, I've had a few close shaves, if you like, a few mishaps, I've done a few stupid things, and I really would say that it's more by luck than judgment that I've survived this far. Long may it continue, touch wood, and I hope to see you again soon. In the meantime, stay safe. Thank you.